So in situational complexities, there aren't always easy formulas, which is why I will seek time and again first principle inquiries, and which is why I asked you what, what is the purpose of your life at this time. Now, so here is what I'd like to actually propose. You started to talk about your applied life and the life in you. So can I, may I propose a mental model that actually builds on what you started to paint and we play with it uh, just, just for a bit. Sure. I propose that we think of ourselves not as one life, but as three lives. What I would like to do is I'd, I'd like to bring the next slide and you read what's on it in black. And if you want, you make a comment or disagree or agree or build it. So here we go. You are born with your life in you, tethered to the seed of your universal life. Your life in the world is the third life to be created and fashioned as you grow by the choices you make. Mm -hmm. In other words, you show up here in this uh, life with the beginning of the life in you. And I, I draw a line there because actually there are two lives inside that life. There, there is the automated life the, and the, the life of awareness and consciousness, which is why we call ourselves the sapient, sapient species. Mm. And I'm proposing that we consider that we show up in this life with a seed of a universal life. And then that the life, what you called applied life, made out of our experiences and choices and the places we go and the people we meet and the skills we build and essentially the space we carve in the world, what we talked about as you have the right because you're alive to claim a space in the world is that third life. And I'm proposing that we think about these as three in one. You are these three lives rather than one, and that that in itself is a way to negotiate, not just balance, but the sense of what is just and what is right. And also in, in your sense of how do you address truth at different levels and even fairness at different levels, that we look at this through these three lives. Here is the next part of the story. The world is an attractive theater of opportunities, luring us into its ways. It offers opportunities for learning, development, growth, happiness, joys, and pleasures, and so much more. We are tempted to allow the life in the world to take over and consume the whole of us to the point where the life in you fades into the background and you completely forget about the universal life. The persuasive fascinations of the life in the world coupled with the natural desire to succeed are so powerful that they easily can overwhelm the natural impulse of the life in you and the calling of our universal life. So your testimony is that for one reason or another, you, you carved earlier in your journey contemplative space about purpose and meaning and structure and process. So in a way, it's easier to have this dialogue with you. But I would venture to guess that you get to interact with people that experience what we're describing here where it's almost as though the, the, the upper two are crowded by the life in the world, that, that you is the life in the world. And, and there isn't necessarily easy access to the life in you and to whatever we may mean by the idea of universal life. Yeah. How do you experience that? What do you do in a, in a conversation when you experience that that is the condition and the circumstance you, you, you are observing and or interacting with in the other person? Yeah. By the way, I, I would even say, this relates to displacement. This is not, what we're describing is not something that's bad. 
you can have somebody who, who is living a life of activism and trying to do good in the world, but they are so consumed in their life in the world and the validation loop of that to a point that they no longer remember or no longer able to access or hear something else inside them. I mean, I, I meet that, but I try not to think that. Okay. I think um, thinking that, like you can know it maybe. Yeah. Thinking that too, too much is, I, I think it doesn't help me interact in a clean way with people around me because then I'm already uh, somehow positioning myself in a hierarchy of um, of what kind of life people experience. Right. Coming back from a place of um, of we don't know and we don't want and I don't want to to judge or be in a place where I'm um, decide, deciding based on, on intuition or some kind of knowing, um, deciding that, which is very, um, it's a big thing to decide on a, on, a, on a different person life, what kind of life do they have? So I, I try to just maybe observe me feeling that, but not so much um, doing anything about it. So what you just told me, which I appreciate very much, um, is that when you interact with any human being, regardless as to whether they are actively present in that moment in time in these spaces, in your mind, you are always inclusive that that is part of their possibility and permission and it's not for you to evaluate or judge or make a decision about another person's life. Yeah, and who, like, how do I even know where I am located? Exactly. Okay, so let's look at the next uh, part of the story. To be sure, there is nothing wrong with succeeding and thriving in your life in the world. A natural impulse, it is in part what we each come to life for. However, rather than excluding our two higher lives, true success is in applying your life in the world as a learning pathway and development laboratory in which our work and the contributions we bring to our fellow humans help us foster and nurture the life in you and the universal life. In other words, we're trying to paint a scenario where the three lives in you, the, the babushka dolls inside you, those Russian dolls, uh, the life in the world, the life in you, and the, the potential of a universal life, that they can nourish each other, they can offer each other support, they can teach each other, they can empower each other with skills. The proposal is that living a balanced whole life, whole person's life, is one where one is not consuming the others. By the way, I'm also not proposing the monastic premise. The monastic premise was I will go and live on a mountain, I will cut myself from life in the world, I will have no life in the world, I will only concentrate on the life in you and or the universal life. I'm not proposing that um, as, as a better path the other way around. Mm -hmm. the, the evidence is that living in the trenches struggling with the day-to-day -day life is the, the richest laboratory for universal life. That's the premise. Otherwise, why did we appear here in the first place? Yeah, I would maybe, I mean, I, I like uh, the writing in general. I would maybe uh, try to think of a different Please. than higher. Because I, I have a um, higher is classification of order. And, and I think that somehow limits how we think about it because maybe it's not um, as linear. Yeah. As, uh, and this hierarchy, for me, it, it triggers something. I don't know exactly what, but I think, as you said, the babushka, so they, they are all there. They are all coming in different points. Uh, it can be in a day that you experience something of each one of these lives. 
and maybe it's not a scale or um, you know that you need to climb, but it's just um, different access points that are somewhat um, open. Yeah, to you. Uh, perhaps um, a um, we're describing different level of uh, and you see, I understand why. And by the way, in your question, you use the term higher, which is why I... I, I mean, I'm used to this terminology, but I'm also mindful that like, it's also in myself. I mean, I am using this terminology, but I'm also conflicted with it because I, it's a terminology of, of scales and levels. And then also what you brought before, it's kind of like, how do I interact with people and how do I basically perceive them on this scale and I'm so let me name let me name the friction first first we name it then we disarm it in part part of the friction is that we are in this postmodern world now where the journey of the last 60 years largely involved breaking out of the historical hierarchical structures yeah. and the reason you are the reason we are sensitive to any hint or suggestion that one thing is higher or better than other is because the history of hierarchical structures is clearly revealing that often it was the culprit of an injurious set of circumstances. The problem occurs when in the wish to do away with the dysfunctional or suppressive or domineering aspect of hierarchical structures, we say that we lose any capacity or any permission to reflect on anything through the, the and I'm not, I'm not suggesting that's what you're doing, but I'm using the opportunity to elaborate what is the friction point, because some, somebody watching this, they could be ticked off by us using any formulation that has levels or terminologies that, that suggest that one thing is better than another. The, the problem being, that if you say there are never levels, everything is at the same level of importance or at the same level of refinement or at the same stage, what you just did is you defined just another hierarchy, just a hierarchy where everything is at the same level. And you made that mental map of the world better or more important because you believe it's inclusive and the only one that's just it's just another mental map of the world yeah um i agree and i think we are I, I mean we can see it in many things i i don't think we need to go into that conversation right now but um i think it's just important to use it when it's useful and and I'm, I'm in regards to what is on the screen and what he was available before. Um, know it, but don't hold it. You're offering a, a wise and powerful disinfectant for interpersonal and for personal management. And, and it, it is the advice of knowing something, but not holding it in your mind between you and the circumstance you're in or between you and another person. Yeah. It's easier said than done uh, as many things. If you're going to work in facilitation with groups and peoples, and certainly if you're gonna go into spaces like therapy and so on, you, you will, uh, this will become a very important element because you need to know certain things, to hold certain things in the range of the possible and hold for the other person, that they're not broken, that nothing is wrong with them, that everything is possible for them, anything and everything is possible for them right here, right now. That is the core premise to, to engage with another life in, in the way you're, you're proposing. 